Hello everyone and welcome back to another graphics card diagnosing video. So here we have a GTX 770 from Palette. Um, it didn't come with this heatsink, but I just, well I got the card as a bare PCB, but it just happened to be compatible with this heatsink that I have. Uh, the actual card comes with a different one. Um, so this is not a Jetstream edition, this is a, it's using the same PCB, but it's a down-costed version of the Jetstream and doesn't actually come with this heatsink normally. Um, but yeah, so it's a GTX 770. Uh, it uses uh, a rather high-end custom PCB, as you're going to see shortly when I'm going to disassemble this card. And I got this card for 10 euros, including shipping. So I think it was like seven or six euros for the card. The rest was shipping. And uh, yeah, basically I already know what's wrong with this because it was described in the listing. But for the sake of making an uh, educational video, I'm still going to include the uh, short circuit troubleshooting steps, which we could theoretically skip here. Um, but yeah, I'm still going to include those. But first, I'm going to uh, disassemble the card and show you the PCB. So here we have the bare PCB. Um, if you've seen some of my older videos, you're going to recognize this one, which is where I got the heatsink from. I already had a card using this PCB, however I have the version that has these two V-Core phases populated. So in this case we only have uh, six phases instead of eight. And yeah, so it's a very nice PCB. It has fuses over here, over here, and then there should be a third one maybe on the back. No. There's supposed to be three fuses here. Uh, oh yeah, the third one is here. So yeah, it's a it's a nice PCB, and because it has fuses, you're not gonna have to be that um, concerned about short circuits because if there is a major short circuit on your inputs, uh, which is well. Usually, you have, when you have a short circuit going from your input to an output, giving high voltage to somewhere where it shouldn't be, your fuse is also going to blow because the output resistance is so low it might as well be a short. So your fuse is going to pop and nothing is really going to happen because there's no power going into the short. Um, however, not every card has fuses, um, so yeah, be careful. Always, always double check and I'm going to do that here as well. So I'm gonna put this slightly here so you can see the multimeter. So first we're gonna measure the resistance of the power inputs. So I'm putting it in uh, diode mode so when the multimeter probes touch, it beeps. And yeah, so we're gonna check all our resistances to ground. So 12 volt PCIe is okay. 3.3 volts PCIe, we go four pins left. One, two, three, four. That's also okay. And now our um, 6 pin and 8 pin. We actually can just probe the uh, shunt resistors. That one's okay. That one's okay and this one should be PCIe again. Also okay. So there we go, we have no shorts on the inputs. And now we can check our output resistance. So for the core, we are expecting a fairly low resistance in the single digit ohms. That's actually rather high. Um, let me use a better ground spot. This thing up here is also ground. No, it actually has 13 ohms of core resistance. Okay, so this is on the higher end of uh, core resistances. From a GK104, which is what this card uses, I'm usually expecting 6 to 9 ohms, but 13 is also still too low to be anything else, but not a short. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's okay. So let's check the memory resistance. 53 ohms, that looks 
Okay, so this card is on Samsung memory. So if you have a card with Hynix or Alpida memory, you're gonna have a different resistance. From what I've been told, I think the Samsung memory usually has the lowest resistance, uh, but 50 ohms is still, yeah, fairly okay. Um, and then actually, we do have two PEX rails over here. There's one here, and then there's another one here, which I don't know why this card has two PEX rails. Um, oh, I just see this one has capacitors knocked off the uh, the back. Huh. There's actually physical damage on this card. I did not see that. So yeah, um, these two capacitors by the second PEX rail are missing. That is interesting. <laughs> um, that, well, we should fix that, but I don't think that's the cause of our problem. Um, since it is a minor rail, uh, and it, that's just an, well, it is the entire output filter missing, but it should still be okay. Um, but anyway, I, I don't really, I don't know the exact resistance that you want to have on a PEX rail like this, uh, on these PEX rails on this card, so I, I'm just pointing out that uh, they exist. Um, we have what's probably our 5 volt LDO over here, and then there should also be a 1.8 volts rail somewhere. Um, this is probably the BIOS chip, and I can actually not locate the uh, 1.8 volts rail. Unless our second PEX rail is the 1.8 volts rail, but as far as I'm aware, both of these sit at around 1 volt. So... Yeah, I am slightly confused, but... I mean, I've already had the card put out a picture, so I know it's working. So, yeah, um, why is included the segment in the video is just to, to do, like checking for shorts and measuring the output resistance of the two most important voltage rails. Um, well, the core resistance measurement is mostly redundant, um, because especially on newer cards like a 2080 Ti, your core resistance will always show up as zero, because the core resistance just is that low. But on the memory, if you have a zero ohm resistance that can... well, that usually shows that one of your memory chips has gone short circuit. Um, and that it needs to be replaced. Um, speaking of memory chips replaced, this is actually the issue with this card. Um, and yeah, I'm going to reassemble the card and then show you um, what the issue is, what it looks like. Uh, and yeah, so basically I'm gonna reassemble the card now uh, and then um, run a test on it. I'm gonna show you the test and the test results and then uh, we can talk about what we need to do to fix this graphics card. So, the card is assembled again, and, well, next part is just turning it on and running the uh, Mats and Mods memory test, and then seeing what's actually wrong with this card, so I'm gonna make a cut here and then show that part. So, we now have the card running in the test system, 
And you can already see here that something is wrong with the card. You can see that there's these white stripes on the screen. And yeah, so this is some fairly typical artifacting behavior from a card like this. And this basically also already indicates memory damage. And um, I'm not going to boot off this USB stick right here and then run the Matt's memory test on the card. So here we have Matt's booted up. It's now going to load the memory with some data, and you can already see up there that something is going wrong. Um, yeah, the, the, the card is having problems. Um, these, yeah, you, you can see the black uh, parts. Those should not appear. So there's something fairly obviously uh, wrong with the card. Sometimes it, this doesn't even show up, and you still fail, but you can see here we failed. And we're going to take a look at the report file shortly and figure out what exactly that this card is. Well, as you can see here, we have one memory module that is producing a lot of error, and that would be the fourth memory module, or um, well, the the way that Nvidia memory modules are uh, built up is basically, as far as I know, it is A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, D0, so B0 or the fourth memory module when you go uh, counterclockwise is the one memory module that is producing our errors. We can take a look at the failing bits here. So we have bit 32 to 63 fail. Um, which I, if I'm reading this correctly, it's just all the bits, like the entire memory module is basically dead. And we can see that nothing else is having problems. The other memory modules just work perfectly fine. So. Yeah, that's all that memory module. And what we need to fix the card is to replace that memory module. Um, for the sake of not having to tear the card apart again, I'm just gonna get the other PCB I have that's mostly identical. Um, but that because of another reason and just show you which memory module that would be. So here we have the uh, this other card. You can see I've already ravaged it a bit, the memory VM is missing two VCore phases I've stolen power stages from to repair the 780 Ti uh, that I had. Um, but yeah, you can see that the PCB is m the same. Uh, it just came with two more VCore phases stock. Um, so yeah. So uh, reiterating on the memory modules. So this is A1, A0, B1, B0, C1, C0, D1, D0. And we had our problems in B0, so this memory module. Uh, we need to replace this memory module on the other card. Um, this card right here has the same memory chips as that other card, actually. And I could try to just pull the memory module from this card to the other card. Um, the only problem is that basically this card has a few issues, um, but the core and the memory on the card uh, from what I know, probably still okay. Um, so there is still a chance that this card can also be revived, though it will be with the knee power. Because the... Um, well, basically, I'm just gonna admit to what I did. Uh, uh, this memory... Con the controller on... This controller was dead. Um, I tried to vault mod, like... The story of this card is basically... Uh, it came with this PCI Express bypass capacitor knocked off. I put that back on and then the card worked. And then I went to volt mod the card, but I did a mistake while soldering the volt mod to the controller, which killed the controller. So I needed to replace that. Um, but apparently because I was pretty bad at soldering at the time and because I didn't have my hot plate yet, um, when I was soldering the new controller to this, I actually caused some popcorning in the PCB, which basically made the VRM not work. And then... For, I don't know if it was a related uh, thing, but the memory VRM went short, both high side MOSFETs died. So I needed to replace that one as well. I tried e-powering the card, but I couldn't have it fire up yet. Um, the PEX ray might also need to get replaced since these capacitors are missing. Um, but yeah, like basically the VRM section of this PCB is um, destroyed by yours truly. Um, however, uh, there is a chance that the memory and the core are still working, and as long as both of them are working fine, this card is theoretically savable by just e-powering it. Um, and that's why I don't want to take the memory module off of this card yet. 
Um, so I'm probably going to resort to just ordering replacement modules on eBay or other retailers. Um, the problem with that one is uh, it, it will take a long time to get shipped and it could also be fairly expensive. So I'm going to have to see if I can even spare such an expense right now uh, or if I'm going to have to wait. Um, but basically, yeah, um, what this means is that this is going to be another two-parter video at least. Same as the GTX 980 Ti Strix, same thing there. It needs a memory module replaced, uh, more than one actually. Um, and I also need to order those memory modules first. Um, and also I still need to practice how to swap memory modules, which is basically why I bought this card in the first place, because it was cheap. And I, it's not gonna be such a bad thing if I lose the card uh, to practicing memory module swapping. It would be a shame if I lose the 980 Ti to that. Or some other cards, I also have a 780 Ti and an R9280X that have the same problem, that also need memory modules swapped. Uh, I also do not want to lose those cards. So, yeah, I guess this is, the, this is the end of the part one of the card. So we got the diagnosis for the card. Um, like, we know that uh, there's a problem with memory module B0. And, yeah, that's the diagnosis. We need to replace that memory module. And now just, if I get the replacement parts, it's, it's just my soldering uh, skills that could um, jeopardize this project. But if you were good enough, you would swap the memory module and the card would work perfectly again. Um, so, yeah, if, if I get the replacement module and if I get the card fixed, I'm going to show that, of course. But I can't give you any time estimate because shipping takes a long time and they also cost money. And uh, yeah, I mean, as a university student, I don't have that much money to spare. So... No ETA on when that's gonna happen, it's just that I wanna do it someday. So I hope that's enough for you. Um, thank you all for watching, and until next time, goodbye.